Hey yeah. guys. Hi Ravi. Yeah. Hi Ravi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. You know one interesting thing happened to me, you know, while I was coming for this shoot today, the auto car kala. So he asked the he overheard a conversation and then he asked me apo enna pa surya nu na vadaka nagatingla. And apo surya nu na kilaklanda mele varliya. And uh, then I explained him, you know, what is Uttarayana. And then when I was going to pay him, while I was getting down, uh, I asked him, Anna, what's your name? And then he said, you know, Ramaswami. Then he said, you know, Ramaswami. Yeah, I hope you're not recording this, huh? Yeah. But then he said, you know, I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here. Hey, okay. Hello. Let's start. Fine, fine, fine. Let's start the video. Yeah. Rolling. Camera. Action. Hello friends welcome to the incoming call podcast can you think what is meant by incoming call for too long we have been going outside in this world but now it's time to go within delve inside to seek the answers to our true inner calling and reflect upon those thoughts and grow wiser so this incoming call podcast can set you on your inner self journey the real journey is not the one which you take outside but the one within yourself the path of self introspection and discovery so with that let's get into our today's video what is uttarayana what is makar sankaran are these two things the same do you think the sun moves from north to south or only east to west will the calendar and seasons remain the same even 1000 years from today what is the impact of earth's axial tilt i know many of you would be having these questions in your mind So today we'll get answers to all these questions. Welcome to the incoming call. Hi friends, I am Karthik, a chartered accountant and an active member of Chinna Mission Chennai, and he is my friend Ravi. Hello, I'm Ravi. I'm a physics undergraduate currently pursuing my CFA, and I'm an active member of uh, Chinna Mission. This is my friend Roba. Hi, I'm Rohit, a data analyst and an active Chinna Yoga Kendra member. So we all meet on a weekly basis and discuss various topics about spirituality, Vedanta, Indian culture, nation building and many more other topics. So friends, were you able to guess what is today? Today is Sunday. Yes, 22nd December. 22nd December, which is also known as the winter solstice. It is that time of the year when the northern hemisphere of the earth experiences the shortest day and the longest night. which is also known as the starting of uttarayana oh now i remember it ravi you remember last year we were discussing and researching about uttarayana and we unearthed some fascinating facts can you tell it to our audience now yes that there actually a lot of uh, interesting research out here so let's start with the basic so what is uttarayana uttarayana is basically the apparent uh, motion of the sun towards the north so it starts on uh, 22nd or 21st of december and goes on until uh, 21st of june so on 21st of june it reaches its maximum north the position and after this uh, dakshinayana happens so what is dakshinayana it is the exact opposite of uh, uttarayana it is the movement of the sun from june 21st that is the north back to south and uh, that goes on until uh, december 22nd now after you look at these two things there are two other important points in the earth's orbit which are called the equinoxes so what is the role of the equinox equinox basically is a period of the earth's orbit where the day and night are equal so there are two equinoxes one equinox is on uh, spring that is on march uh, 20 and uh, there is another equinox called the autumn equinox this is september 23 so these uh, important points in the earth's orbit play a humongous role in our uh, human psychological uh, development so we have kept international yoga day on the 21st of june where the sun's uh, intensity will be the highest in the northern hemisphere yeah. so it is a period of activity and the exact opposite dakshinayana or uh, when uttarayana starts Uh, it is a very meditative period so people actually have to get into more meditation that is why on uh, uttarayana starting that is december 22nd we have uh, kept it as a world meditation day so there are three moments of the earth which we must all understand the first is the revolution of the earth around the sun 
and it takes about 365 days to complete one revolution around the sun. The second is the Earth's rotation on its own axis, which is tilted by 23.5 degrees, right? And it takes 24 hours for Earth to complete one rotation on its own axis. The third is a very minute one, which not many of us, many of us are aware of. And it is known as the Earth's wobble or the precession, which is the Earth slightly changes in its axis by one degree, you know, every 72 years. And it takes, and one degree is equivalent to one day. So the, there is a change of one day every once in 72 years. And this is a very important moment of the Earth. So please remember this third moment of the Earth, which we will also connect back in the later part of the video. That's some great piece of information. But hold on, is Makar Sankranti on January 14th related to Uttarayana? Great question. So Makar Sankranti is actually the transit of the sun into the Makar Rashi. There is a huge harvest festival celebrated across India on uh, this date. So the, there is also traditions associated with kite flying. So the date difference between Uttarayana and Makar Sankranti arises because of the wobble that was mentioned earlier by uh, Karthik. Oh, wait, 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 wait. My head is spinning with all these movements. Earth rotating, revolving, wobbling and tilting. Relax, we'll watch a video for better understanding. As you know, the sun rises in the east every day. But this location in the east shifts throughout the year. This shift is mainly due to the tilted axis of the earth. Let us try to understand the shift in this rising location with the help of a model. This large ball is our earth. Flash right of this phone will be our sun. Let us place it in the center. We'll mount another phone on the large ball. Camera on this phone will capture the position of the sun as it rises on the horizon in the morning. Here is how months are arranged on the dial. 21st March 21st June 23rd September and 22nd December Frame on the left shows the top view while the frame on the right shows the sunrise as seen from the earth. Let us start from 21st March which is also a vernal equinox. Days and nights are equal. On this day, sun rises exactly in the east and sets exactly in the west. Days and nights are equal in the northern hemisphere. At this location, position of the sun has slightly shifted northward. 21st June Days are longer and nights shorter in the northern hemisphere. On 21st June, it has reached its extreme position on the north side. From this day onwards, it starts its southward journey, popularly known as Dakshinayan. On 23rd September, it is at the same position as that of 21st March. This is also the autumn equinox. Days and nights are equal in the northern hemisphere. Sunrise location continues its southward journey till 22nd December. Now, it is at its extreme position on the southern side. Sunrise location will start its northward journey from this day. This is also known as Uttarayan. Sun rises again at the same location on 21st March. Here is a snapshot of all the sunrise locations as seen from Earth for your reference.
During this capture, we placed our camera on the equator. Let's return to the tilted axis of the Earth. As the Earth orbits the Sun, it goes through 365 daily rotations, while the axis maintains its tilt. On the June 22nd solstice, the tilt causes the North Pole to face towards the Sun, while the South Pole faces away. When the Earth's orbit takes it all the way around to the December 22nd solstice, the North Pole is now tilted away from the Sun and the South Pole towards. This tilt explains why the North Pole experiences winter in January while the South Pole is experiencing the opposite season, summer. The North Pole is facing away from the Sun and gets less overall sunlight. The South Pole is facing towards the Sun and gets more. To understand this more fully, let's look more closely at how the Sun's rays hit the Earth. First, notice that halfway in between July and January, during the September 23rd equinox, the tilt causes neither pole to face away or towards the Sun. As the Earth rotates every 24 hours, each area of Earth's surface will receive 12 hours in view of the Sun and 12 hours out of sight of the Sun, 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. Equal lengths of day and night is why this time is called an equinox. As the Sun's rays hit the surface, they are strongest at the equator, directly in the middle, where they hit at a 90 degree angle. As Earth moves towards the December 22nd solstice, the North Pole tilts further and further away from the Sun. At its maximum tilt on solstice day, the Sun's rays are now hitting directly at 23.5 degrees south latitude, or the Tropic of Capricorn. Notice that every location within the Antarctic Circle at the South Pole is getting 24 hours of sunlight. As the Earth rotates, none of these locations is ever lacking in sunlight. This creates the summer season for the Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, inside the Arctic Circle, the reverse happens. 24 hours of darkness, winter season for the North. As we watch the Earth continue its orbit, the Earth's tilt again moves towards the Sun, such that when we reach the March 22nd equinox, we once again have all parts of the planet receiving equal amounts of sunlight and darkness. The equator once again receives the direct sunlight. At high noon, the Sun would be directly overhead here. Returning back to the June 22nd solstice, we see the tilt move the North Pole towards the Sun, so that the North Pole receives more and more hours of sunlight each day. At the solstice, the Northern Hemisphere experiences summer. All points within the Arctic Circle experience 24 hours of sunlight, and the Sun is directly overhead, providing its most intense heating at the Tropic of Cancer, at a location 23.5 degrees north of the equator. Note that each solstice and equinox represents opposite seasons in opposite hemispheres. The winter solstice in the northern hemisphere is the summer solstice in the southern. Wow, that video was mind-blowing. Kartika, now I understand why Ravi sleeps long during the uh, December month. Hey, Rohit, Rohit, done it. Vadapa, we'll see how many Vadapas you actually get in the Melbourne test, coming Melbourne test. Relax, it is just a joke. Now this reminds me, is there any mention of Uttarayana in the ancient texts? Yes, Rohit. Actually, if you see uh, in the Mahabharata, during the Kurukshetra war, when it was happening, so Bhishma Pitama, uh, he was, when, in, when he was in his deathbed of arrows, that time he was waiting for the start of Uttarayana to leave his mortal body. Because it is considered an auspicious time if you leave your mortal body, so that you will gain liberation and moksha. So, does that mean during the Dakshina and if you leave your mortal body, you won't get liberation? No, no, not like that. Even if you have done, if, if you have done good deeds, no matter whether it is Uttarayana or Dakshinana, you will definitely attain liberation and moksha. But Uttarayana can be a little more added advantage. Okay. And also, one important thing which I want to tell is that in the ancient Roman culture also, there used to be a festival known as Saturnalia wherein they also celebrated this festival, which is like the movement of the sun towards the northern part of the, you know, northern journey. And it's a big fest, big harvest festival in ancient Roman cultures. So, even in the Ramayana, the Abhijit and Dhruva Nakshatras have been clearly mentioned. So, when Lakshmana was pointing at the pole star, now the pole star is Dhruva or Polaris. But Lakshmana clearly mentions that the pole star was Abhijit. In modern days, it is known as the Vega star. So, this drift has happened because of the precession of the earth. There is even a verse in the Yuddha Kanda of the Ramayana, where the planet Venus or Ushana has been mentioned in a sloka as surrounding the pole star. 
So the shloka goes as Abhijitam tamaditi tishtati dhruvam cha dhruva nishitam pushana stapanam hanti pragnyanahi yata tamaha. It is great to understand that our ancient sages and rishis have understood the astronomical changes that is happening and have accounted in the ancient texts and epics. Yes, yes, they were very much well ahead of their time, Rohit. And also we must you know, understand there is a calculation uh, because of which this drift has happened from 14th Jan uh, to 22nd December. Uh, Ravi, you want to just uh, tell that? Yeah, this is a very important point. So, every 72 years in the solstice, the winter solstice, there is a one-day backward shift that happens. And this is because of the precession of the earth. So, over the centuries, it has led to Uttarayana drifting away 23 days from what it was before. So, if we do that calculation, it comes out to more than 1500 years, which is approximately in the 3rd century AD. So, the, this was a time when Makar Sankaranti and uh, your... Uh, Uttarayana, it coincided on the exact same day. Oh, so now I understood why there is a one day backward drift on Uttarayana. So, that actually leads to this interesting question as to why uh, Uttarayana is still frozen on uh, Makar Sankaranti. No, but actually, Ravi, if you see, it's uh, not frozen. There is just a general perception. If you see a lot of our uh, Hindu calendars, like Karl Irna calendars or many other calendars uh, or some Panchangs also, in uh, our uh, Hindu tradition, they mention Uttarayana as 22nd December. But if but if you do some Google search, you might find that it is on 14th of Jan. So I think there is a, a not a mass awareness is not there, which I think there needs to be some efforts uh, to create a awareness among all the public in India as to that this is Uttarayana. And also there are two schools of thought. Uh, one is the Nirayana. Which, take in, which don't take into account the procession, that is the wobble of the earth. And hence, they continue to celebrate Uttarayana on 14th of Jan. And there is another school of thought or the philosophy, which is Sayana, wherein they calculate the procession, they take into account the procession, and hence, they celebrate Uttarayana on 22nd of December. So, hence, these you know two schools of thoughts uh, you know, need to be bridged. And so that is why, and also there can be many reasons as to, you know, for a long period of time, our country was, you know, ruled by outsiders and invasions happened. So there can be multiple and many factors, but these are some of the factors because of which there might be, you know, a date freeze. Now it makes sense for me, why Uttarayana is on 22nd December and not on January 14th. So the only thing we need to do now is to create a consensus between these two groups who say that uh, Uttarayana is on January 14th and Makar Sankaranti. January 14th and uh, December 22nd. So the solution to this is actually very simple. We can actually continue to have a puja of Uttarayana and Makar Sankarati on uh, January 14th, but we need a separate puja on the December 22nd date also, so that the scientific and the cosmological uh, indications are taken into account. That will actually solve the problem in Mashvarana. Great. Actually, yeah, we need to you know start having puja for Uttarayana. We should also celebrate it. Today, after right after going home, I will start and we'll do a puja today at for Uttarayana. Great, guys. So I think yeah, it was a good discussion. See you all in the next incoming call podcast. Hope, Hope you guys are tuned in. in. Don't, Don't miss, miss our next, next incoming, incoming call. call. An, an exciting, exciting episode, episode awaits you. you.